get your feelings hurt. Read this. Hello and welcome back to Payments Void. It's time for another episode of Short Film Roundup. Is this Short Film Roundup? This is it. Wow. What is Short Film Roundup? It's the highlight of our week. Is it? Or day or whatever. Whatever this is. Is this where we like take short films submitted to us from other people and analyze them? The very same. Wow. Wow. Yes. Neat. That's incredible. Now, wait. Do we do this on YouTube or Facebook also? Uh, It sounds like you don't know very much about what we're doing here. Yeah, I forgot. (laughs) You, like, created this. You're, like, one of the guys involved. uh, (laughs) Dee's Amnesia brings up a good point. And that is that uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we have an even better place for you to watch it. And that's in our Facebook group called Film Alchemists, where we deep dive into the philosophy of filmmaking. We do. Uh, We have many other pieces of content there, a lot of live videos, and it's a lot of fun. So if you're a filmmaker, hop on over, join us at Film Alchemists. Yeah. Like the hoot. It's not just us here there either. There's other cool people talking about cool things too. Yeah, man. The whole community. We interviewed Stanley Wong. Stanley Wong got an interview. About about to interview some other people? Yeah. We review feature length films. We do, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you're a filmmaker and uh, this isn't your movie that we're about to talk about, you can submit your movie to have the same treatment. Like if you watch us just completely decimate and destroy this beautiful piece of artwork yeah. and you think, man, I wish someone would do that to my film, <laughs> uh, we can do that. We can. There's uh, a link in the yeah. description. Mm-hmm. And if you click on it, then, it'll, you, you know. What? <laughs> Google Forms? Google Forms. There's a Google Form for that. Anyway, yeah, submit your film to us and we'll tear it apart. So. Okay. Anyway, what movie is this? Today we are talking about Terry Kindle in Orange Green or the Orange Green? Orange Green? Yep. Uh, and Orange Green. And Orange Green. Yeah. And, Terry uh, Kindle and, and Orange Green. Green. There There's a link in the description oh, wait, and wait. or in this post wait. that you'll be able to see and watch it. Wait. Who's this? Okay. Who's this directed by? Meg, Meg Scaff. Meg Scaff. Meg. Okay. Interesting. If you haven't watched it already, please uh, do click so. Click the link. Yeah, because we're gonna spoil everything. Yeah, Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you want to? Uh, why don't you get started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Okay, so this is Terry Kendall and the Green Orange. Nope, nope. Terry Kendall and Orange Green. Terry Kendall and Orange Green. Yes. Uh, and this movie is pretty competent. Is the word I would use. I I thought that the characterization was rather good, even though it does do voiceover. Um, which is something I'm not always a fan of. I thought it was done pretty well here in the sense that it didn't feel like the voiceover was just a crutch. And I felt like I was actually getting um, characterization through her actions and the way she you know, walks through life. Like, for instance, the window thing here. Um, and I thought that the character is Terry Kendall is an interesting character. Just the way she carries herself was fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Like I enjoyed watching her go about her day. She had personality. Yeah, and I, I loved that she was Imagine passionate that. about uh, her job, even though it was just you know, just working at the grocery store. Yeah, she was very content with life. Yes. Like. Yeah. yeah, I I liked that. Uh, this yeah. this is one uh, short film that I believe had a lot of uh, style put into it um, that actually worked. I thought. Yes, I. I would define it as having a voice. Yeah, I yeah, it had a voice. This is a film with a voice, and I liked it. it had a had a a real uh, uh, a real sense of style. Where if I were to see another film like this, I could say, "Oh yeah, this is clearly a was it Meg? Yeah, Meg Scaff. Yeah, this is a Meg Scaff. Yeah, right. Yeah, I totally. Mean, it had a, it had a feel to it. Totally, I, I can I, see this person making. I much dug it, and you know, when we first started the movie playing. My initial impulse was, oh, this kind of looks like old footage or like from an older camera, sort of dated look. The sound isn't totally perfectly dialed. So I I had put on my seatbelt, was ready to watch a very amateur movie and was surprised at uh, really how competent this this was. This this is actually, uh, from a technical standpoint and from a storytelling standpoint, one of the stronger films. If we have to draw a line. a little bit. Divide them between yeah. <laughs> competent and incompetent. This is far on the competent side. Far, yeah. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I really did. A person who knew what they wanted to do. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah. It definitely didn't feel like they were, yeah, they knew what they wanted to do, and it didn't feel like they were trying to make any one kind of movie. Yeah. You know, it was like, like we often talk about 
filmmakers emulating things they see. They're like, oh, I see that. I want to just make that kind of movie. Right. This felt like somebody who was making a movie. They had something to say. Yeah, like, you know, they wanted to make a film themselves that was their own movie. You know, it was kind of funny. It it reminded me a little bit of, what's the movie, uh, Sorry to Bother You, a little bit. Um, Uh, Yes. The wacky kind of. Yeah. Offbeat, yeah, kind of the kind of pacing kind and of stuff. Ta- uh, tone. Um, also, it reminds me of another short film we talked about here a while ago called The Wine Wine of the Month Club. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, that was a very interesting film. Yes, it yeah. was. Al- although not necessarily one of my favorites. It no, was, it was very interesting. What was, it had a voice. Yeah, that's what. What was the thing to say? I had a had a flavor to it, and this one does very much have its own its own direction. You know, that's what strong directors do. I think. You know, I think this is a very this is a film that shows a very strong director. So. Well, it's it's one or the other. It's either it's either the director's voice be, is a part of the story, yeah, or the uh, a very d- good director gets completely out of the way and becomes like invisible. Right. I find it's one or the other. Yeah. Interesting. Um, um what did you guys think about the ending? Uh, it, it really, oh, yeah. it really was a big turn in tone you know it was, it such, was a, yeah. such a very uh positive vibe throughout this movie the character is so filled with hope for the future yeah and then that future is just dashed right yeah. it's just ended with this brutal murder that just kind of came out of nowhere yeah i kind of enjoyed it uh i i would call this you know a dark comedy Mm-hmm. Because at the end we still kind of more have like that. a comedy dark, yeah, <laughs> right, like right. like the dark didn't come in until the very end, right, right, yeah, that's true. The comedy wasn't dark, right. The comedy the was there, was. and then the ending was dark, yeah. Um, but it seemed to, it seemed to take delight in showing that, you know. Yes, well, I I appreciate uh, when when I can't anticipate what's coming in yeah. a movie. I love when that happens. And I really felt like we were setting up Tim for some kind of reveal that was very different than this. Tim's character, to me, it felt like we're going to make him look like he's a creepy weirdo. Yeah. And then we're going to reveal something at the end. It's going to be a punchline. It's going to be funny. Right. He's actually this, he's right? A, but he's actually But he weirdo. actually <laughs> was a creepy weirdo, like, yeah. to the 10th degree. I thought yeah. that was cool. And uh, that took me off off guard. Yeah. I love that. The ending did leave me feeling a little bit weird. Uh, in a kind of a bad way because it was sort of unsatisfying and I don't know if it was intentionally unsatisfying or not but it definitely felt like I needed something else to happen other than the story being she's stalked by somebody and then dies you know I wonder if it's a uh, a pacing issue it could be because we have a lot of build up with a very little yeah. Um, ending, right? Like the ending is just dang over, and you know, pulling that rug out from under you may have been part of the in- intention, but there is sort of an equation I feel about how much we put pour ourselves into a character of how much sort of conclusion we want uh, out of the other end. I don't think the problem is it ending with her being killed. I, I think yeah, the absolutely. Problem is, is maybe h- how much we got. Yeah, uh, that is interesting. So in that sense, is that is that audience salvation that we're talking about like kind of making the audience feel okay with the ending uh, um no i i think it's perfectly fine to leave an audience feeling very unhappy or dissatisfied about what happened to the character but i i think there's a a, a certain uh amount of exposition you expect like explanation you expect based on how much build up you did to get there what well, i think we're talking about satisfaction in that kind of sense aren't we uh yes but not not necessarily satisfaction in the outcome yeah satisfaction with in, in how it's presented yeah. to you i yeah I, I would agree that i did i felt the same way i felt kind of i felt unsatisfied dissatisfied from the ending that it was that that she died, and then I'm like, okay, so what now happens what? because of her death, right? But then nothing. Um, but I felt like that was the kind of the dark comedy punch there, is that we're like, and that's it, haha. 
<laughs> oh, he should have took her into the apartment and then uh, put her body into a chicken stew. Yeah. Like with all the chicken breasts. Like he's, yes. been, he's been getting chicken breasts to make a soup with her in it. Yes. See? <laughs> yes. Also, I found myself getting a little bit bored in – the middle when she goes to talk to her friend she goes to talk to her friend and mm. discuss re- reaccounts what we've seen basically to her well, friend no 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 they do do a good job of of the narrator chimes in and says yeah. then i told her about what happened yeah yeah she yeah. didn't actually yeah you didn't get bored <laughs> i i got <laughs> bored and yes they do it better than not but i did i was wondering i was like well i don't know i don't need to see some of this at least uh, and, the, but i had another yeah. thing that was i had a problem with was her friend's reaction to the situation saying that, oh, you're you're just being paranoid. Yeah. I thought that was silly because I kept thinking, I was like, but the reason why she's freaking out is because he's asking the same question every day and he knows where the meat is. Why would he keep asking the question? Yeah, it doesn't seem realistic. That's where the weirdness yeah. lies, not in the fact that he is asking the question, but in right. the fact that he already... He's asking information he already knows, and we're established that he already knows it. That's why he's weird. Yeah. But and it seems like this friend character is completely ignoring that piece of information. I th- I'd say I that's frustrated a, by that. I'd say that's a writing error. Yeah. Um, I think someone wanted wanted the friend to basically just dismiss the, yeah. the person, but without being like a an evil kind of person. You know what's kind of weird is their, their narration here. They talked about the friend... Then they said her so-called best friend, right, is when they introduced her. And when you say something as a so-called best friend, that's implying that they're not really. Yeah. But. Well, I, I think that works or is meant to work because the narrator is not the character. The narrator is a third party. And so she may be the best friend to the character, but the outsider the third party narrator is saying this is her best friend but maybe not such a good friend because she could have given good advice here but she doesn't right right but in saying so saying that the character is not such a good person not such a good friend but i felt like the character came off as just a normal character just a normal person and i felt like that did disservice to the plot there because because when the person like you said is saying um, well, uh, maybe he's just that way, or maybe he's just that way. Like, she's not giving a lot of effort into her answer. Um, but it, it doesn't feel like her character should have been, like, mean or something about it, you know, to, to to be dismissive. Or maybe she's just a dismissive person, or maybe she's an asshole, but none of that was present. So it didn't feel like what she was saying was realistic. You know what I mean? Yeah, it didn't feel real. What she was saying did not feel realistic at all yeah and i, I think if they changed her character then they could have yeah. been like if they made her like narcissistic right where she's not even like listening exactly yeah you know, something exactly. like that yeah yeah that because that yeah, threw me is, off she's too. kind of laughing at her friend right while she's like heavily drinking like, yeah, yeah heavily drinking like, like genuinely concerned yeah. for her well-being <laughs> right. she's carrying around a 40 <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it's a good point good point uh yeah. Well, other than that, those are my two biggest issues, really. I really liked the like quick cuts away to imagery to I did too. Things I did saying, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cutting away to a close up of the chicken. Yeah. And stuff I like I, I love that kind of thing. I right. like the the play button, the play icon there. Yeah. yeah. At the very beginning, that's <laughs> awesome. That's, that's, it's cool that's, little that's bits cool. of style. I like. Uh, I like the setting of the stage here. Yeah, I like how all the shots are relevant too. Yes. Yeah. No, yes. I, th- I think it all works really well. Um, one of my favorite parts are when she's walking with her little pocket bottle of vodka. Yeah. She sees the stalker, green, orange, orange, green. Mm-hmm. Yep. And is shocked and drops her bottle. <laughs> and it's like it's this dramatic moment. <laughs> right. But it, it's a plastic little and bottle. And it bounces. And so it hits the ground and just goes tick, tick, tick. And it. It was like uh, it was just a great decision. I loved that, that moment. Was just yeah. a great decision. Yeah. Uh to poke the fun out of that though, they show her drink it earlier. I was gonna and say the same thing. Full. It looks totally full. Ooh. Oh, that's funny. Even though she did take a drink earlier, I I did notice that too. Yeah. 
But I wonder if that was. <laughs> I wonder if that was on purpose, where she's walking around like drinking this, like she's a lush or something. Yeah. But it's su- super tiny. So yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's like taking a many sips right? from it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Tim is really uh, creepy in this. I was. Tim's going great to in this. Say, yeah. Uh, it's nice to see a bit more of uh, some of some of Tim's uh, more diverse roles here. He's, yeah. He's got. He's got some range. Yeah, we a ton of range. We've seen Tim. Well, in, except I th- I'd say ninety percent of his shorts, he's had a very similar character, yeah. like a uh, an authoritative figure, some kind of authority figure. Yeah, he's yeah. a principal, a therapist, a teacher, right? A, a boss, right? A which, dad, which he's good at. He's great at those roles. Yeah. Uh, but um, in fact, even in the what was it, Changing Sides? Yeah. Uh, choosing he, sides. Choosing sides. He. he he has a very different role, but he's still a dad. Right. Yeah. Now. Right. So th- this was different, and he was creepy. Yeah. Dude, this smile he gives on the subway. <laughs> yeah. That really that subtle, super no teeth. Super subtle. I'm yeah. like, oh, that that's like, that's like Morgan Freeman style <laughs> facial acting. Yeah. Like, d- nicely done. Yeah. It's right here. That's a great. <laughs> that's, that's really a great creepy. smile. Yeah. It's cool because he's smiling like with these yeah. parts. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's unnatural. <laughs> I've I've always said that Morgan Freeman can can convey an entire like paragraphs worth of dialogue <laughs> with face movements. Like he he can just do that so well. Yeah. And uh, Tim Tim chimed into that. Ability. Tim is the new Morgan Freeman. You're the new Morgan Freeman, Tim. <laughs> I know you're watching. Uh, okay, I think it's that time. What time is that? What are you that? talking about? Question time! Oh, is this the part of the show where we ask the filmmaker questions? That is the the same, oh, yes. Okay. Do you, have oh. you missed the past 80 episodes? Do you know anything about Do you know about what's going on Roundup? here? Uh, yeah, we talk about short films. Good. Okay, All good. Right. That's good enough. <laughs> Plenty. As D suggested or remembered, this is when we ask questions directly to the filmmaker. And if any of you guys have questions for the filmmaker, either in Film Alchemist or here on YouTube or here in Film Alchemist, wherever you're watching this, it's confusing. Um, <laughs> we should get better at that. Huh? Just post, <laughs> post them below either way. Uh, our directors tend to be pretty good of, at chiming in and Very answering much. those questions. And it's a lot of fun when it turns into an ongoing dialogue. So, yeah. yeah. And please uh, let us know if there's anything you picked up on that we missed. Yeah. Shall I go first? Oh, yes, you go first, D. Go. Um, Mick Scaff. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I can't think of anything right now. What's your inspiration for this short? Um, I felt like this, this was definitely heavily stylized, especially with the the uh the narrator had such personality to their voice um and i feel like that's a very conscious decision uh, along with all the kinds of stylistic cuts you have in here um so i want to know what your inspiration was for all that stylization uh most common struggle for filmmakers is obtaining the locations we need to tell our stories and you got one of the holy grails in a uh, grocery store oh yeah with other people around that were cooperating uh, that was definitely gorilla huh that gorilla. was definitely gorilla but still but <laughs> even so dude it's hard to get gorilla footage where the yeah, people don't stop and store. look in your camera and be yeah. like ooh you know like it worked it worked <laughs> so i want to hear the story of shooting in the grocery store was this all gorilla were you just sneaking in putting on an orange vest uh did did do you or someone you know work at this place and get special permission or uh, or did you take over a grocery store? Uh, who are your filmmaking influences, and what are you up to now in filmmaking? Um, I wonder if this is an earlier film of yours, or if you've made a bunch of stuff since then. So I want to know what you're up to, and I also want to know um, what your your genre is, like what genre of film you yeah. feel like you're trying to make. Are you more of the comedy or more of the murder? <laughs> yeah. Or are you are you actively trying to do this fusion of those two things? Which kind of feel a little bit of that here. You know? Yeah. So, and uh, yeah. how long ago did you make this and what kind of life did it have? Uh, did, did you take it to festivals? Was it for school? Um, well, what'd you do with it before it ended, ended up here on Short Film Roundup? The best of all places. <laughs> Where Which is the made best it, place. It's final resting spot. It's final <laughs> resting place. <laughs> <laughs> we're where short films come to die. 
<laughs> we're the afterlife. Yeah. We kind of are the afterlife. The afterlife of short films. Our films, most of the films get submitted to us after they've had a that festival run. Festival run that. is yeah. over and stuff. We're, we're, the, we're the second life <laughs> for short films. Whoa, that's funny. All righty. Uh, well, thank you uh, to Tim for submitting that to us. And thank you to Meg for making it. Yeah. Uh, we had a, that was a, just a very fun time watching it. And yeah. Uh, Meg, if you got more, send send us more. I want to see more from you. I definitely want to see more. All right. And to all of our filmmakers and film alchemists, keep the short films coming in. Uh, and tune in three times a week for more short film roundup coming to you here from Payman's Eternal Void of Misery and Doom. Sad. Uh, see you next time. Bye. Okay, bye.